and we all know it. People were not having personal devotions anymore. And by the way, even if you're in the family, you ought to have personal devotions and family devotions. You ought to pray by yourself and read and meditate on the Word of God. And you need to join your family to do that as well. And if you have a church group that has some kind of prayer time or devotion in the morning, you need to be a part of that as well. It is true that God told us, he didn't tell us to preach without ceasing. He didn't tell us to sing without ceasing. He didn't tell us to go to church without ceasing, but he did tell us to pray without ceasing. And then Jesus Christ gave a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, what is happening even to Christian families, well-known Christian families, is what's happening in the world. But it's happening to well-known Christian families as I speak. In this plague pandemic and having to be home more with your family and so forth is pushing people even in the plague pandemic, to divorce is happening all around. There are people who claim to be Christians who are filing for divorce. And I believe uh, that the plague pandemic is revealing how, how hypocritical the family in the first place. The family at home, which, and at speaking engaged while promoting your Christian pro products. See, and I've been preaching on this for years, this hypocrisy. Don't act like Christians at home, but of the other church and in meetings, uh, all of this She's my honey bunch, and he's my honey bunch, and and and, and uh, he's uh, he's this, and she's that, and all this foolishness, all these lies. And the sweet evangelicals demand that you say things like that, which are nothing but lies, because it's not that way at the house. My better half, and my sweet thing, and all of that, my honey. And all this foolishness. And let me tell you people something. You cannot make what is not. You, you can't make up stuff. It's called that's called lying. And 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 having to be home together with your sweet thing all the time. It's going to reveal how much of a Christian you are. So you need to cut the foolishness, people. And you need to stop playing and get back to praying. Because it's all falling apart now. Families that seemingly were thriving, they're falling apart at the seams. And the pressure is not letting up. It's, it's intensifying. What is it going to take? People dropping dead on the street in front of your house. 3,000 dead a day is coming in a few weeks. You don't need to worry about the election. You need to worry about 3,000 people in uh, America dying a day. In America dying a day. You think that this is a joke? I've been telling you all along, don't listen to the president about this. I, I, from day one, I knew he was lying. Now it is; it has been revealed that he's been lying.
And as a Christian, I personally would rather have him than Biden. So I'm not picking on the president. I'm not voting for either one of the devils. I'll leave that to you all. I, I, I preach to the devils. I tell them what they're supposed to do. I, I, I don't vote for these devils. I never have. I pray for them. And I tell them what they're supposed to do. In God's sight. And if they don't do it, we have the mess we have today. Same thing with President Obama. And the foolishness he did. It makes no difference to me whether they're white or black. But I, I've been telling you for over a hundred days, you need to listen to God. You, and I've said it like this. You need to listen to the big G-O-D, not the big G-O-V. Gov. No gov. You listen to God. And look at what they're doing. They, they're doing exactly what I told you they would do. Both the Republicans and the Democrats and if there are any independents, they're in it on in on it too. They're playing games with you. They're both trying to force you to get back out there to work. For you, they they took a vacation before they even talked seriously about voting for you, and they're not voting for your next stimulus check, which is nothing. And so God's people better stop playing and start praying because God is chastising. Let me help you. God is whipping your behinds real good right now, especially in America, because uh, this is not, in your mind, the American way. All restricted, afraid to... Uh, you can't send your children to school so, you, so that you can be footloose and fancy, free to do whatever in the world you want to do. Scared to go back to work. Scared to take a job unless you die or get sick, which might be worse. See, this is something you don't want to get at all. You understand me, people? The doctors don't even know what you have. They don't know what this is about. Okay? So hopefully you will start following God again and stop following presidents and politicians and the gov. Because they're not, they're not going to come through for you. You need to start praying to God. And some of you need to start moving with the quickness out into the country somewhere. I don't care if it's in a trailer. You need to move. Because it's getting, it's, it's getting worse. You know why it's getting worse? Because some of us, many of us in the church are still playing instead of praying. Don't get mad at me. Are you playing? Or are you praying? And I'm not talking to the remnant. God knows the remnant. God has his 7,000. I'm not talking about the faithful few. I'm not talking to them. They know they they with me all the way. They're saying amen and nodding their head. I'm talking about you folks who are playing church. You see, you're playing church when you go to the church and put your hands together and pray in church and are you all spiritual and raise your ungodly, dirty hands up to God, you devil. But you don't pray at all at home. You don't pray with your wife because you hate you because you hate your wife. You don't pray with your husband because you hate your husband and you hate your children. So you don't pray for them. You're glad to see them go to school and 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 put your hellions on other people who can't handle them. But now, most of you are stuck home with your little hellions, and you can't stand it. And that's what and the pressure is on. It's a, it's like a, these new uh, uh, pressure cookers. The pressure's on, and you can't stand the heat. And that's why you're getting out of the kitchen. Literally, you're leaving your kitchen and getting a divorce in the midst of a plague. That's not 
That's not, not only is that not wise, that's not smart. That's dumb. Yes, yes. I'm talking about Brother David White and his wife. While they were promoting pure flicks for the family. Now, they don't even have a family. Designed together, designed to pull families together and watching and fun. Now, they're getting a divorce. But when they were out there promoting it, buddy, oh, my. Oh, they got the beautiful smiles, and they look so happy and wonderful and just the perfect, sweet little evangelical couple. See, you don't get divorced overnight, Jack. I know. Uh, for for a Christian couple to come to the point of divorce, Jack, that's a whole lot, man. A whole lot been going on for a long time. But they faked it, like so many sweet evangelical couples today, where you don't even see them together, uh, and you only see you never see the family together, you know, because there's nothing but hypocrisy and foolishness. The Adams family at home and the Brady Bunch at church and in the public. You, you don't have anything going on, and you know it. See, and this, this is what this is what what I've been dealing with for years. This hypocrisy. This phoniness, this fakeness, acting like you're so happy and wonderful together. This is my sweet thing, and this is my honey bunch, and all this foolishness in public, holding hands in the pulpit, and all that nonsense. Little twin preachers, and he says something, she says something, is a mess. And they don't hold hands in the house. Hardly even touch each other at the house, and, and see. And what happened? What, what what happened? What happens next is, out of the blue, this wonderful, happy, loving, sweet, sweet honey bunch and sweet thing couple have filed for divorce. Jen Hatmaker and her husband as well. People are getting divorces in a plague. Poor little children. Poor little children. Beautiful families. The devil is a lie. No, no. You say, well, uh, you ought not to say this about these people, you know. Uh, they're hurting and this, that, and other. You ought to feel sorry for them and so forth and so on. I don't, I don't feel sorry for these people at all. They know what they're doing. They're selfish. For you to do all of that, and then to put your children in that mess, you're selfish. Yes, I do believe that that uh, you ought to stay together for the children's sake. That's a good reason to do so, because you're going to put them through hell. Because you want to be selfish and be modern. And I know you don't like it. I know I know we got a whole bunch of folks don't like it. That's fine. And so yeah, what will keep the family together, you need to pray together, you need to obey together, and you need to stay together for the glory of God. It's a matter of uh, having a good testimony with God and with man. You know why people announce they have, they're getting a divorce? Because they got married publicly, they got to. Uh, they need to go ahead and make that public. Some do it for the wrong reasons, but it is done. So don't get mad at me for bringing it up. They put it out on Front Street. I, it's none of my business. Why are you telling me? Why you got a press release about it? And then want to plead with people to to have mercy and 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 and, uh, and, 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 and all of that on them, and not say anything negative about them. All negative comments will be deleted, and so forth and so on. 
you shouldn't be doing it in the first place in God's sight and 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 uh, and you shouldn't be doing it in our sight and you should not be doing it most of all uh, uh, as far as humanly speaking in the sight of your children see there were problems before the plague is revealing the problem And what I'm, I'm saying all of this to say to you people, stop the fake mess. Stop the masquerading. All the lying you're doing about how wonderful your marriage is and your family is and you, oh, my sweet darling husband and your little blog and Instagram and all that. And she's such a wonderful sweet. See, see, first of all, you don't understand. If you got to go and say, oh, my sweet darling husband. Every time you talk about your husband, my sweet darling husband, he's such a wonderful little gentle giant and all this kind of foolishness. We already know you don't have anything going on. Every time you say something about your wife, she's my sweet thing and down this, that, 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 that. You see, the people who are discerning, they know you don't have anything going on. You're just, just making up stuff. You don't have to do that. It's nothing but lies. And you're copying off of other people. And, and all you have to do is sit together and let people, let people look at you and talk to you. They can tell whether or not you got something going on. Anyway, Nick and Leona Venditti wrote, when we have our time with God, our devotional time with God in his word every day, the Holy Spirit that inspires God's written word brings it to life in us. That is why we can delight in him and in his word. Now, this family, this couple, they have the right idea. If... You don't look forward to this time, particularly after you have been saved for a while. There's something wrong somewhere. This ought to be the highlight of your day. You ought to be making a beeline to family devotions, couple devotions, personal devotions, as, as they call it, time with God. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all of these couples that are falling apart under the pressure of the plague pandemic. We pray that, Lord, your Holy Ghost will help them to see the damage they're doing to themselves and to their children, and that they would suck it up and reconsider and pull the filing, the, the divorce filings confess their sins and repent get counseling if they need to and just suck it up and act like adults and make a commitment to you that we're going to keep our vows and we're going to raise our children together help every family that names the name of Christ to pray together, obey your holy word together, and stay together, and help us all to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to you, Lord Jesus Christ, our first, our first love. And Holy Father God, we pray for the salvation of those families that don't know you as Savior. Have your Holy Ghost and your Holy Gospel. Uh, Lord, your Holy Ghost to move upon their hearts and not let them go until they come to know you as Savior. And Lord, direct them to wherever the Gospel is being preached, uh, preached uh, here or someplace else. But Lord, help them to hear and to understand the gospel, and to get saved today. And we pray that you'll grant these families household salvation. Forgive us of our sins as Christians. 
Lord, uh, and churches all across this nation and around the globe who have dropped the ball on the Great Commission and uh, the Great Commandment and help us to repent and revive us again, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit and help us to get on fire again with a burden for lost souls to witness to those who are lost around us. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray that you would send forth laborers into the white and harvest fields to witness to those who are lost. Even if you can't use us, in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in reciting or reading the New Apostles' Creed. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Mean what you say. Believe what you say. And I assure you, this is one of those wonderful reminders that we come across in the Christian faith uh, that remind us of what we are about and more importantly what God and Jesus are about. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He was seen alive by Mary Magdalene and the other women, the disciples and over 500 other brethren. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22, 23, and 24, uh, where God speaks to wives. And on this go-around, uh, I am going to try to uh, just read the scriptures uh, as we go through the different sections uh, without much comment, as I have expounded upon this many times. And then the next go around, we may do something else. But this is what is needed in the church today. This is what is wrong with the church today. People in the family are not doing, husbands, wives, Children are not doing what God told them to do in the family. So they are hypocrites in the church. God does not like ugly. And as they used to say, charity begins at home. We got folks who love everybody in the church, but they don't love everybody in their church at the house. This makes you a masquerader. This makes you a hypocrite, a phony, a fake. God is going to help you become what he wants you to become right there at your house. And if you are a hater at the house, you're going to be a hypocrite at the church and out in society. Because it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter what people say about you at the church or in the street or on the job. Is, is, is a, what matters is what your family members think of you. 
because they know you. Are you a Christian in your heart at the house? Do you do all of that praying at the house that you do in the church? Do you do all of that praising at the house and praising and dancing and, 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 and uh, running around the church like you love the Lord so much? Uh, do you do that at the house or just at the church? Are you happy and joyful only at the church and not at the house? Do you have a cheerful attitude and spirit at the house, in the home? Can you smile and have a good attitude at your house with your family or only at the church on the job? Around people who don't know you and you don't know them. You hypocrite, you phony, and you fake. See, this is why so many children run away from church as soon as they can because they know that their parents are nothing but phonies, fakes, and hypocrites. It's not, it has never been shown to be real to them. They don't believe Christianity is real because they've never seen it at the house. And then we got this crazy idea that everybody can be zapped as, as soon as they walk into the church building. We're super saints and so forth and wonderful and dandy, but we got hell at the home. And there are many pastors who contribute to this foolishness. We could have a wonderful, great, spiritual, revived church at the church building <clears throat> and have devilment in the homes, including the pastor's family. Because some of the greatest devils are in the pastor's family. Some of the greatest uh, devilish, uh, some of the uh, biggest hypocrites are the children of pastors. And more so today than ever before. And they all should resign. All pastors who don't have their family uh, in check, including the wife and the children, they ought to resign. That's why I said many years ago, some some years ago, that if 50 to 60 percent of the pastors would resign, the church would have revival. And so they didn't resign, so God shut down the churches. And don't be, don't be trying to blame it on the government and all that. I thought we were supposed to respect the government and obey the government. They're closing down other places, too. Politicians are not stupid. They they know they need the church to get elected to office. You voted for them. And they're going to come around in another two years or four years. So don't, don't try to make this into an issue when it's not an issue. Forcing something. People are dying by meeting in church buildings. Thousands have gone out into eternity. God is not playing with us. You're not even pleased with the church. Well, if, you, if you're not pleased with the church, you know God is not. Stop lying and stop trying to make people think the church is, is, is innocent and we're so wonderful. Now, we thank God for the remnant and we thank God for the 7,000. But for most of the folks in the church today, that's not the case. And so this plague is on us. Don't be trying to blame the homosexuals and all of that. Now they, they got their judgment, and it still exists to this day, AIDS. And he, God had that judgment to fall on the good. See, everything that God does is for our good, even if it's bad to us. This plague is good. It is for our good. The devil couldn't bring, bring a plague like this if he tried. And if he did, God allowed him to do it. We're in trouble because of our sins. I have said before, and I'm going to say again, don't get all caught up with Jerry Falwell Jr. and uh, Becky Falwell. 
they're just the tip of the iceberg. They have pastor friends, and they know of pastors and their wives who do the same nasty, swinging, whoring around, whoremongering mess. And who get drunk and everything else. So don't don't focus on Jerry Falwell Jr. and Becky. This is they're just the tip of the iceberg. There are many other pastors in churches that are doing that mess. Got boyfriends and girlfriends in the same bed with them. Been going on for years. That and that's why we got the plague sitting down on us right now. And until we humble ourselves and pray and repent and turn from our wicked ways with emphasis on turning from our wicked ways. See, you can hide it from me, you can hide it from other people, but you can't hide it from God. People thought I was crazy when I, when I was preaching for years that pastors are uh, pastors got boyfriends and girlfriends. Pastors' wives have boyfriends and girlfriends, and they're swinging. And on Ashley Madison, people thought I was crazy. I've been preaching this for this for years because God told me to preach it. And if that's if that's not stopped, guess what? These plagues are going to get worse. There's a black plague uh, plague uh, brewing right now uh, in China. As I speak, you don't want to get that started. So, verse 22, wives, you want to keep your marriage and your family? Do what God has told you to do. Husbands, wives, children. But God spoke to the wives first. Because they're supposed to be in subjection. And, and, and some of you are not going to like this statement. If... This little Lego part right here, these little three Lego parts were put together like they're supposed to be in the family. It would solve 60 to 70 percent of the problems in the family, regardless of what the husband is about and what he's doing. If you don't believe me, read this passage and then read. First Peter chapter three. If the wife does her part and the mother, the wife and mother does her part, she can solve 60 to 70 percent of the problems in the marriage because she is supposed to be in subjection. And if she did it right, there will be a sweet, sweet spirit in that house. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As unto the Lord. He, he doesn't say anything about if the husband buys flowers for you, if the husband opens doors for you, if the, the husband takes you out on a date night every week. He doesn't say all that. He doesn't say anything about the husband here because it's not contingent upon the husband. She's supposed to, and this is what our sweet little evangelicals don't like. Everything is supposed to be contingent on the husband or somebody else. And that's not what God is saying here. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Not some things, everything. And some of you wives need to learn how to be quiet and let it be. And let your husband, and, and, and I hate that phrase, let your husband, just, you just do your part. Your, and, and, and your husband, uh, God will deal with your husband, let me put it that way. And submit in all things, everything. Obey God, obey Jesus, obey your husband, and be set free and live, yes, the good life. 
Because people who are obedient to the Lord, they live the good life. The Pope said yesterday, uh, and we're not followers of the Pope, but he finally said something that made sense. He said, sex and good food is a gift from God. And I said, amen, Pope. Inside of marriage, of course. They're gifts from God. And I said, okay. Now, Pope, even though we're Baptists and we're Protestants, uh, we can agree with you on that. And there's nothing wrong with the family institution. Family that God created, done his way, is a good thing. All the way through. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pray. Based upon God's word at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I truly believe that people who are truly Christians, they love peace and quiet. They don't, they don't care for a whole bunch of noise and uh, cacophony and shooting and, and fussing and fighting and all that foolishness. People in the streets all time of the night. No, no. So let's pray together for everybody. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for those who name the name of Christ and all f families that do the same. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves and to pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways. Help us to repent and get back to you, our first love. Thank you for salvation, spiritual family and life and financial and material and protect, protection and provision blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And we pray that you'll continue to bless us in that way, even during this time. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray now for everybody in the government from the president on down, for he's not only the president of the these United States, but uh, he is called the leader of the free world as well. We pray for salvation and spiritual and life and family protection and provision blessings upon the president and upon everybody in his cabinet and the uh, uh, administration. Holy Father God, we say with you, Lord Jesus, what you said on the cross for all of us. Please. God, forgive these people of their sins, for they know not what they do. Help them to humble down, to confess their sins, and to repent, and turn from their wicked ways. And uh, we pray that you will help the president to start telling the truth, if that is even possible, uh, in his 70-plus-year-old frame. Uh, Lord, uh, only you can turn his heart, and, uh, and, uh, and with you all things are possible. And so, Holy Father God, we pray uh, that uh, you would bl uh, have these uh, blessings to be shared abroad upon governors, be they Republican or Democrat, uh, state senators and state representatives, mayors, uh, police chiefs, sheriffs, be they Republican or Democrat. Lord, we pray these blessings of salvation and spiritual blessings, Lord, upon them. We pray for all uh, deputy sheriffs as well as all of the 
people who risk their lives to work in the prisons across this nation and also, Lord, the police officers. We thank you for them. Help them to return home to their families. And Lord, we pray that all of the foolishness that is going against the men in blue and brown would cease in this country uh, and that they will be free to do their jobs. We do pray that you would weed out the bad ones, but Lord, uh, protect and keep the good ones. We pray also, Lord, today for all uh, potentates, all uh, prime ministers, all presidents, all premiers, all around the globe and their countries and people in authority. We pray the same blessings upon them. We pray for the protection of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, your holy city. And we thank you so much for Jerusalem. And uh, Lord, we pray that you bless your chosen people and we thank you for them. We also pray for the salvation of all people in this country, around the globe, and even in Israel. Uh, we pray, Lord, uh, that, uh, and, and in the media, Lord, save them. Have your Holy Ghost to not give them rest once they hear the gospel. And they would repent and get saved. We pray for the revival of all of your true saints in this country and around the globe and uh, Lord in the media as well. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that uh, we pray for all of the Christians who are being persecuted in China and in Nigeria and around the world. Comfort them as only you can. Deliver them as only you can. Protect them as only you can. Give them grace in their trying hours and in their dying hours as only you can. And Lord God in heaven, we pray for the healing of the sick. We pray, Lord, for those who name the name of Christ. Help them to call the elders of the church. Help them to confess their sins and to be transparent and have the elders of the church to pray for them that they might be raised up. We pray for the salvation and healing of those uh, who are not saved. And Holy Father God, we pray for those who are, who are grieving and who are hurting right now because of the sudden death of loved ones so many of them would live another 10, 20, 30, 40 years if it had not been for the coronavirus plague. And uh, Holy Father God, please forgive the president of the evil that he has done regarding this plague. I tried to tell him, I tried to get his people, uh, his so-called evangelical advisors to tell him right at the beginning, what he was supposed to do, and he did not listen. And now he's in a mess uh, because it has been revealed uh, of the foolishness that he has done. I pray that you will save this man's soul, help him to humble himself and get on his knees and confess his sins. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'd cast the devil and the demons of hell out of uh, the president's life, heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and out of his family. And rebuke and bind the devil and the demons of hell from this family. For so many people have died because of his foolishness and his disobedience. The blood, as I said way back then, over a hundred days ago, uh, is dripping from his hands and from the hands of pastors and uh, preachers who were supposed to tell him what he needed to do, and evidently they failed. And so, Holy Father God, I do pray that you will, uh, Lord, comfort these families, for it is probably doubly 
devastating to hear that this man knew in detail way back on February the 7th that this thing was deadly and far worse than a flu. There's no excuse for this. And Holy Father God, I pray that this man would do the right thing. And I pray that you turn his heart to do the right thing, to humble down and to cut out the foolishness. Save his soul, change his life. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would give these people comfort as only you can uh, save their souls, draw them to yourself, Holy Father God, Lord Jesus. And uh, for salvation and comfort. For we have absolutely no words now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. For uh, we pray now for the family and friends of New York EMT John Red. We pray for the family and friends of New York Mother Linda Rennie. We pray for the family and friends of New Jersey Engineer Quentin Weist. We pray for the family and friends of New York Doctor Matavi Aya. We pray that you'll comfort these families. We pray for the family and friends of Louisiana Police Officer Kijuan Bates. We pray for the family and friends of Florida School Principal Reno Buffis. We pray for the family and friends of New York Police Detective Robert Cardona. We pray for the family and friends of New York photographer Anthony Causey. We pray for the family and friends of Illinois radio host Harold Davis. We pray for the family and friends of New York lawyer uh, Lila Finwick. We commit these souls and these families into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives. We pray for salvation and comfort for every person in every family around the world. And the Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all of the people who have sent in prayer requests here and answer their prayers and hear and answer our prayers for them and we pray for salvation spiritual family life financial material protection and provision blessings upon all of the thousands of folks who have sent in prayer requests including these seven we pray for Adriana please heal her body provide her with enough money to pay her rent and have good medical treatment. Please have Anna to refund the money she took from her and have Anna to become, or rather have Anna to come to know you as Savior. And we pray that you'll protect them all from the coronavirus plague. We pray for Marie Grace. Please bless them with the money and housing situation you want them to have. Uh, heal her and her son of stress and protect them from the coronavirus plague as well. We pray for Pastor Barry. Please have the problems on his wife's side of the family to be exposed and resolved and uh, his side of the family too. Help his wife to make the right decisions. Heal him from his disability and bless them with the money they need to pay for housing. We pray for Sony, heal her daughter, Sweta, of any ailments she may have. Have an important court have an important court case regarding their business to work in their favor. We pray for Tim, help him to fully overcome alcoholism 
and depression enlighten him and give him purpose to live. Help his mother, Dana, to recover and protect them from the coronavirus uh, plague. We also pray for Emmanuel. Help as Vinny Patras, who fell from a three-story house to make full recovery. We pray for Nancy. Provide her with a new car. Comfort her and help her to recover from the death of her husband and protect them all from the coronavirus plague. And now, Lord, we pray for those who have gotten saved through this ministry. We pray for all of the others that are not on this list of seven, as well as we pray for seven people who have rededicated their life, and we pray for all of the others as well. Help them all to grow in the faith, and, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them uh, and protect them during this time and we pray for some by name, Peter, Richard, Surde, Daniel, Ellie, Maggie, and Rosario. And for those who recommitted their lives to Christ, we pray for Mary, Rose, Victoria, Orinamim, Maureen, Judith, Charlene, and all others. We commit these souls into your hands, as well as ours, Holy Father God, let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and forsake. Amen. Our devotional reading today is titled The Word Made Flesh by Dr. A.W. Tozer. He said, I have given much thought in contemplation to the sweetest and tenderest of all of the mysteries in God's revelation to man the Incarnation. Jesus, the Christ, is the Eternal One, for in the fullness of time He humbles Himself. John's description is plain. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I confess that I would have liked to have seen the baby Jesus, but the glorified Jesus yonder at the right hand of the majesty on high was, was the baby Jesus once and cradled in the manger straw. Taking a body of humiliation, he was still the creator who made the wood of that manger, made the straw and was creator of all the beasts that were there. In truth, he made the little town of Bethlehem and all that it was. He also made the star that lingered over the scene that night. He had come into his own world that he had created, his father's world. Everything we touch and handle belongs to him. So we have come to love him and adore him and honor him and we should do it forever and forever. <clears throat> now, dear friend, if you are with us today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the free pardon of all of your sins, allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in him for your soul's salvation from sin the power of sin, the pain of sin, and the punishment of sin in that awful place called hell. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have done wrong. We all have done evil in God's sight. From the Pope on down. From the Dalai Lama on down. From Joel Osteen on down. Yes, even Joel Osteen is a sinner. I am a sinner. We all have sinned before God, and we have all failed God. Every last one of us, red, yellow, black, and white. That's why it is so dumb for us to think we're better than other people, because we're not. 
Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty. There is a punishment for sin. The Holy Bible states in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. Uh, we die because of sin. Many people don't know that. That's the reason why we die. Because we have violated God's law. And our bodies go to a funeral home and then to a grave. But our soul is already in hell if that soul had not believed in Jesus Christ, if that soul rejected Jesus Christ in this life. That soul will go to hell, for there's only one way to be saved under heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through Muhammad. You can't get there through Hare Krishna or whoever. Jesus alone. So thirdly, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are on the road to hell. For Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18:8. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any uh, prophet, apostle, preacher, or writer in the Bible. In fact, he preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Why? Because hell is a very real place. And he wanted to emphasize that point, that he came and suffered and bled and died for our sins to save our souls from hell. so that we can be in heaven with God and with him and with the angels and with the people of God. When he described hell, he said that hell is a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. It is a place of pain. He also said hell is a place where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go anywhere where the fire is not quenched. So hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. Straight from the lips of the same Jesus Christ who preached more on hell than anybody else. In fact, more than many preachers today. He said these wonderful, beautiful, loving words to let us know that we don't have to die and go to hell. When he said in St. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart, dear friend, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just do what he told you to do. In John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him, the word whosoever means anybody at any time, red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in his sight. Whosoever believeth, believeth means to trust in, to have faith in. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ for your soul's salvation. Stop trying to strive to do it yourself. Put your trust in him. And you should not perish, that is, in hell, but have everlasting life. So, dear friend, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I strongly urge you and invite you to trust Christ as your Savior today. Right now in your heart, it's, it's, it's not hard. 
in fact, is easy. It was hard for God and it was hard for Jesus. But all you have to do is believe in Christ. And you already understand instinctively that once you believe in Christ, you're turning away from your old life. And now you're following Christ. You already know that. Is in you. So, dear friend, while you're believing in your heart, in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, pray and ask him to save your soul, and he will save you. Call on his name. For Romans 10, 9, and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell? Saved to what? Saved to heaven. Get on the old gospel ship of Zion and be saved. Stop, stop sinking in sin and into hell and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on his name right now and he will save you. I'll be more than happy to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Just repeat it after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. For I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments. For I have lied before. I have stolen things before regardless of the value. I have coveted in my heart and lusted in my heart after people and things. I have dishonored and disobeyed my parents. I've dishonored you by taking your holy name in vain. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe with all of my heart that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins to save my soul from the hell that I deserve. That he was buried and rose on the third day, early one Sunday morning. Lord Jesus Christ, I receive your free gift of salvation. Please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to change and help me to repent. And help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart today that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God, that he suffered and bled and died for you, was buried and rose on the third day, early one Sunday morning, by the power of God. Allow me to say to you, dear friend, congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for your soul's salvation. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said 
In John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. And dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, if you believed in him, please email us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer. If the Lord tarries is coming and we live, uh, we'll be back here tomorrow at um, 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Pacific. And uh, if the Lord says the same, I'll be giving another briefing uh, how to stay and how to survive the coronavirus plague briefing. And so uh, you can come back and be with us for that.